Boa noite a todos. Good evening, everyone. Hello, Boa noite. Good night. Amen. 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 Good night, Boa Pedro. Amém, irmão Pedro. Amém. 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 I have used, I'm using the, the, the subject in Amos chapter 3, actually, let me read for you verses 7 and 8. In Amos 7 and 8, the Lord said that uh, he will not do anything. Read 7 and 8. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. A lion has roared, who will not fear? The... Very good. Once again, we're beginning with another live broadcast with the Jewish from Fortaleza and Felipe. Felipe, are you in Santa Lucia? Yes, in Santa Lucia, Brother Pedro. Are you from Paraíba now? Republic of Maria. Republic of Santa Lucia. That was the name that I gave them. Yeah. Because, praise the Lord, Santa Lucia, the Lord supplied several co workers in the Lord's work. That is why I gave them this name of Republic of Santa Lucia. Very good. And the live is the first live in three states. In Ceará, yeah, yeah. Paraíba, it's the first time that we, and we just had a conference in Natal, Rio Grande do Norte, right? Cannot forget Rio Grande do Norte. It was a wonderful feast, an unforgettable feast. The saints will share with us. The participants are brothers. Yes, it was, big. we're breaking record, 1,300 brothers and sisters. The conferences in the region of Natal, I think it's around 900, right? And this time, we got to 1,300 people. Wow. This is really crazy. The saints are really following the word very joyfully. Even though there are, they are having several events lately, we are always concerned about the expenses of the saints, but the saints are not really measuring the effort. The Lord is supplying it because the love for the word, the love for wanting to follow the word closely is greater than anything. The Lord honors their hearts and supplies that, right? So praise the Lord. Share with us a little bit. Introduce yourselves a little bit and share a little bit about this wonderful conference we had. Okay. I'm going to start with me. My name is Josimar. I'm from Fortaleza. And I've been a part of the church life since 19. And I'm with the region of Serra and Brother Pedro. Just to speak a little bit about the conference. The most we have been able to have regional conference was was a thousand brothers there in the structure. And then most a thousand brothers. But in this conference now for Natal, we had a thousand three hundred brothers. But in Fort Dallas we had 600 brothers. So when you add, there was two parts. The first, meeting in Fortaleza, and then 600 brothers, and then the second part in Natal. So together, you know, the brothers have been having a burden and have been liberated, liberated by the prophetic yes, word. Yes. Thank the Lord. So even if we had for both conferences, 1,300 
1300 plus 500 is nearly 1800 people this is wonderful amen amen my i'm philip i'm here from santa louis and I serve here with the brothers, accompanying with the brothers, together with the troops and captains, to bring the Lord back. You know, I'm with this burden, we're advancing in Paraguay and also Region 4. Thank the Lord. And a detail, too, is that we need, we, we need to limit the number of brothers because we can't fit them. But thank the Lord, you know, it's a it's a holy problem, but now we can we need a province a bigger just out of curiosity, you know, people who were at a hotel of the event that wasn't that didn't doesn't go to church life, you know, they they were attracted, you know, to that atmosphere that and on Sunday they were there. They went, registered for the the conference and heard the prophetic word amen and that's a that's a detail i forgot truly we had we had to ask brothers to stop registering because you know we can't you know there were had brothers that was like ah i'll go even if i have to stand there were people who stay on the floor yeah i know i don't know if it's uh someone who works in the hotel or a guest in the hotel that they heard about the conference and then they they wanted to participate saints informed them that the uh no more room for them to get in was, uh, he was a hotel clerk then he sat on the floor and he paid for registration of course he did not sit on the ground but entered and participated in the conference there, it was, that was uh, a, a family a family that was being hosted yeah, yeah there was a family also but even in another case of a family on Saturday who had a contact with Jobson and Jobson explained to them about the conference and on Sunday they decided to join family a couple and two teens two daughters and praise God they're from the inlet of São Paulo, Fernandópolis it's already presented to the, the brothers here in the region to care for them who they are really opened with two polite sisters daughters to join the conference i believe there are others also we do not know but the environment of the conference already by itself attracted lots of people or is doing miraculous things supernatural things you cannot explain that for what the Lord is doing. Soon, in a while, saints from Balorazonchi sent us a number of videos and pictures and information. How crazy it is the church life. It is no longer just a church life of a weekend, of a static church life, just, just those items of services functioning in a judicial way, no one participating during the week, a few people just for the, the, they're no longer just in the weekend. Today's totally different. For example, let us take the example of the church in Belo Horizonte. Every day during the week, there are brothers and sisters who are going to their meeting hall, who are getting together to immerse in the word, to have work cries, and to go out with the come and see, with co-porting, invite people to go to the house of people, the teens, you know, this is wonderful. When I received these information, permission is this is the church life God always desired to have for his church. And after nearly 20 centuries, the Lord was not able to have it. Just in the beginning, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, the wonderful situation begins to take place. But in the end of the first century, things was, were lost, degradation entered. 
The second century onward, the gradation was deeper, and today, praise God, the Lord is having mercy on us, and then we'll see the factors, why, especially because of the prophetic word, the things, the Lord is putting everything in order, and things are happening, miracles are happening every day, the saints are not just happy about living a church life as a Sunday goer, just going for the weekend. Today, praise God, every niche day, we have new people. We, the saints are doing the come and see 20 people, 10 people, 15, 30 people. That is something amazing. This during the week, not in the weekend. So we're really happy about what the Lord is doing, but we want to say that we're not uh, running, pursuing just the great work. We just want to do the Lord's will. May our Lord to be satisfied to do His will through our little help, little operation, which is to closely follow the Word and to practice His Word. The Lord will do His will still in our generation. This is our desire. We want to preach the gospel of the kingdom, to build the Lord's church and to bring the Lord back. This is our heart. We want nothing for ourselves. We just want to be faithful, faithful servants of the Lord, right? He is working you know, on midst or outside our comfort zone. Who, who That's likes true. to be in that, that in the passivity? It, you be irritated because of today the spirit is seven times intensified. Everything happens very fast. Every single day, we've seen a lot of a lot of testimonies, and that is encouraging. And this word is advancing, and yeah. that is a fact. That it is doing the work, and not just that. We see that all continents we have accompanied. I I have encouraged a couple of brothers to you know share this. To share this because many times we 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 don't know we don't know that the lord does the miracles on the you know the gospel is in, in brothers every single day blind see the paralyzed walk the word is advancing is reaching people people are being saved in the streets so you know we need to we need to you know promote this and i declare to also leave your comfort zone because the church life isn't the same the church life today it has a whole dynamic that is a little <laughs> you'd be a little dizzy and true it's full of opportunities uh, we are ecstatic this week you take an uber there's no way to do immersion with them to, for, to receive the word, you know, this, this immersion I can send you digitally, and my physical therapist, I saw that my physical therapist works with teens, you know, we can bring it for teens, there is no excuse, the Lord is going to touch us through the word, so there's very, there's a lot of options for us to practice this word. Então, uh, eu, eu me lembro, né, va, alguns anos atrás, André, você se lembra daquela feira, a última feira do livro? Yes, I remember a couple years ago. Remember, uh, André, yes, yes, yes. last book fair that we have, a Christian book fair in São Paulo. I don't know if uh, I remember I which, year, which year was it. Uh, 2020. 2020. 2020, right? I remember quite well that I invited a pastor, even of a young age, to give a, an opening word. I don't know if you joined that, but this pastor said that in our time, there is no more miracle signs and Roger just recorded the book of Acts. Yes, yes. His desire was that that time, 
could return to the Dinar days. This situation, he said at his time, the situation was barren, and at that fair, our co-putters were operating with full strength in that fair. I had already started on the co-porter. They were already impressed with our co-porters. I like to say, you know, that the Christian leaders themselves, now they are seeing the experiences of the church, miracles, signs, and wonders. Praise the Lord, saints. We are having experiences every day, every day. It is happening around us and among us, it's all over the in all continents. Not to mention that we have so many miracles, so many things happening. Isso está nos deixando tão impressionados com o que o senhor está fazendo. Até esquecemos né, de que nós estamos em pleno, em pleno vapor o trabalho na África, né? O irmão a mim ainda está lá, tenho recebido algumas notícias. Os irmãos estão muito alegres, né? estão ali muito encorajados em todos os países da África. E né, hoje um irmão, do, do, um líder de Quênia, uh, me escreveu, falou que foi... É, foi muito encorajado com o aperfeiçoamento lá na África do Sul, né, que o Quênia vai avançar, pedindo para a gente orar para que eles tenham, uh, consigam um local Ask them to próprio, pray, to have a proper place, tem, tem, uh, to, to have meetings, meetings with all the activities, the house of teens, so on and so forth. So the Lord is operating in all continents, Korea, I've forgotten, so we're advancing in all continents. Only the Lord to do that among us, but there is one factor. André, Josemar, Felipe, there is a factor, and this factor, it is the very word of God, the word that comes out from God's mouth, which is operating all of that. Today, he found in the church, those who receive the word, love the word, they're actually also learning, not only with co-porters, we are learning with the teens, this love of simplicity, to firmly believe in the prophetic word, 100% to make immersion and now going out, practice the word and doing the common sea, preaching the gospel and co-porting. So things are now happening very quickly, so we're very happy. So I'd like to take advantage of the situation, right, Shazumar? Remember that I said a little bit about still in the Gospel of John, still mentioned the matter of Mary Madeline. Remember, and I'd like to ask for all of us, brothers and sisters, for us not to remain only in a very objective way in regards to the Word of God. The Word of God is coming to us in a very living way. Cannot have a relationship with the Word as a mere obligation or just to follow the live broadcast on Thursday, the Saturday, prophetic word on Sunday as a mere obligation as a uh, check in our checklist. No, but let us have a heart of Mary Madeline that even after she called Peter and John to come to the grave, Peter and John came to the tomb of Jesus. There was no, nobody else there. Jesus raised up. They remained. And he thought that it made no sense for them to remain. Returned home. So, uh, this indicates sometimes that our attitude toward the Lord's presence, the Lord's word, still we are very objective, very technical. But Mary Madeline remained in the tomb. She was not satisfied and not seeing the Lord. She wanted to know, to see the Lord, to see the body of Jesus. 
And Jesus uh, made himself known to her. So then in the message, I said, dear brothers and sisters, let us closely follow the word, not just technically, not just as an obligation, but with our hearts. Because in Exodus chapter 19, when the people of God was taken out of Egypt, but opened their heart at Mount Sinai, first thing the Lord said, he said that the Lord brought them under eagles' wings, all of them, make them to come to the Lord. But immediately, he said, if diligently hear my voice, if you keep my covenant, so the first thing it is to be diligent in hearing the voice of the Lord, to hear with diligence, it's not just to hear in an ordinary way or just out of obligation or just with a technically, but with diligence, seeking the Lord's presence, seeking what really the Lord wants to speak, to have a heart for that. This is the first item that I said to the saints that we have to have this heart closely following the word and to receive all the blessings. Sometimes I like word. this, Brother Pedro, and I thought you shared this point of Mary Magdalene. You said about the difference of the the feeling of of Mary and the disciples. They they ran desperately to the tomb. They went, saw that wasn't there and left, went back. But Mary Magdalene was, she had a yeah. heart of seeking. She, she wanted to change. How, how should I put this? Because the Lord had to go to the Father, but he remained because of her heart. That's, that's very rich. Because that thing that she had, as, as like you said, if you go see, where did you put Mary Magdalene? She, she was desperate for the Lord. And, you know, yes. we need to act like, love the Lord, run, and whatever problem we we go back we go back to our problems we go back to our lives right. our you know routine. i see a lot of things in, in question to this word i i was very encouraged and at this point that we need we need to leave our to leave our automatic everyone knows that, that on thursday there's the live saturday that there's the live attack on Sunday, there's the prophetic word, the speaking of the direction, there's the immersion, stuff that are so simple, but so rich for us. If we don't, if we don't do it, we will do it automatically. We have to have this heart of seeking, and the teens, the teens have this heart of seeking. I, a group of teens, they commented this on Saturday night in, in Natal. They, they were, they were gained, they converted, and this was the first time that they had contact with Brother Pedro in presence. They said that we accompanied the conference in Fortaleza, but being being in person is different. This word, hearing this word. So, brothers, I I was renewed also with this experience of the team that they they truly have this heart of seeking. Brother Pedro said in uh, Region 9, the teens, they already have two notebooks, right? One for transcribing the message and one to transcribe the transcription. Brothers, what heart of seeking. They do the immersion, they transcribe the immersion, listen to the message, transcribe the message, right? That's a heart of seeking. That's a heart of following closely. This is a heart that we need to have and that needs to be found in us. But Pedro, when you were speaking about this, I, it's not just in the truth to listen to the audio, but being in person or online. But this word, 
to enter as a sound and pr processing us, but we need to have a dedication because this word truly is the true one God. It's transmitted by your word. It's not just a reading. It's not a technical for us to, to listen, but it's through the spirit to do this so that this truth enters in us. So the direction for us is to have this want, this will, this will of true God to, to enter in us. This is what truly gains me. This is what we need. Every opportunity of this word. It's not to listen to the mind, uh, to do a lot of things when it's merely a sound in, in our ambience, but this transmission spiritually. It's not just saying sounds, but it's as a spirit to enter in our hearts. And that makes our hearts burn. And this makes us practice the word. And this makes us be transformed, right? This is what this is why I touched on this message. And that was the second point of a, an addition of John that I mentioned in the message, which is on the way to Emmaus, the two disciples, they were followed by Jesus, they did not recognize him, although Jesus was exposing the scriptures to them. They witnessed that their hearts were burning while Jesus was speaking to them. They only discovered, they just found out that it was Jesus when they got to Emmaus. And that was another point that I'd like to add that up. We have the seeking heart of Mary Madeline. That we are not content with only finding a cold letter in the messages. We want to have a heart of seeking in each message, in each word given, something that burns in our heart. It speaks to our heart. I just I heard this message, I heard that message. First of all, the Lord makes our heart to burn. We hear the word doesn't burn in our heart it's because we do not touch the Lord's presence. So this is a very important point. And also adding up to what Andrea said, we all, for that, we need to have this aspiration of Mary Madeline, we need to recognize that our condition after after the fall of man it is we're short of the truth the man who was disconnected from the true god from his own one which is the truth man was connected to the devil or the father of lies and him there's no truth he says lies it's because he is a liar and the father of lies. So unfortunately, we are associated to the liar. In our being, there is no reality. We pray the Lord when we believe the Lord Jesus. Our spirit receives reality. The spirit receives life. And in our spirit, sanctified, the truth entered in our spirit. But... Our soul, which is a very person, our emotion, will, our mind, our mind is filled with vanities of our thoughts, and our whole being still is filled with vanity, filled with lie, of false things. And we desperately need that the only true God sends the same one, the same one, Truth, uh, he is the word, uh, to fill us with the truth. So when man sees that reality, he seeks the word with all desperation. This is the desperation we, we need, to, that we're lacking, though, to seek the word, to get out of this 
uh, life of falsehood, of vanity. That is why men are still filled with vanity and marriage cannot work. The relationship, the social relationship doesn't work. The family also doesn't work. Why? Because even Peter denied the Lord three times. We are not trustworthy because of that, but praise the Lord. We can have a different reality, which is to seek the word, to seek the Lord's presence, to be filled with reality, to be more trustworthy, to be more useful in the Lord's hands through this desperate seeking of the word of the Lord, with this burning in our heart. I believe that this will change all our life. It's what it says in, in point two of the immersion of today. It says the word is what's the word is the the tool that the Lord uses to sanctify the church. So this word has washed us. You know the word means simple. Out of being with the teens and even the kids, because even the kids being involved with the teens, having a heart that's simple. So us, so we're gonna have this desperation for the word. Sometimes we need, but sometimes when we, our heart doesn't burn for the word, it's because we're complicated. We analyze, we think we have some knowledge, we think we know how to do something, we know ourselves, or comes a team, a kid, with all the simplicity. And then the word comes and makes the heart burn. And this is what is missing in us. We need to we need to pray always to the Lord to give us a simple heart, uh, a heart, uh, this uh, uncomplicated heart. Mm -hmm. The word that your brother Pedro said was to this one. We need to leave this perverse world. Sometimes we're very trapped in this in our understanding, our concepts, our know-how how to do things. And we end up impeding ourselves of doing work and having a, a burning heart when we hear, you know, the Word of God. But thank the Lord that the Spirit, the Spirit is doing all of this movement and is bringing us back to the principle. Today, I see it like this. We, we brothers, are living the time of Acts. We're living the time of Acts. Uh, everything that's happening in the church. The church life is not the same. How, how's, how's the heart? <laughs> On top of the word, thank the Lord. The brother, brother Pedro, he, he shared with us of, of the word. The word, it needs to encounter us in the church with the people, those servants that have that heart of seeking. And this word, it transforms us. This word that's true, that's the truth, that, that, that transfers the, transmit the person of God and cleans us. You know, the washing of the word that we you know, takes away everything that's unnatural, the vanity, the wants, or a lot of us, a lot of us today in Christianity has a, a seek of position, a car, but this word today encounters in the church, the church and resurrection, you know, that we're using this term, people, simple people, where they receive this word, they turn trustworthy through the word, with the washing of the word, and do the will of the Lord. So the secret is this, is to follow closely and with a heart full of this word, that's the truth. I also wanted to say that we can't be imprisoned in logic. We, us that are, are older, our life is logical. We have a routine, there's a routine. There is determination, there is techniques, and and this change of our heart 
we can't be imprisoned in logic, this human logic, because then, because this word, it brings us to the dimension of God, and we're seeing this today. The miracles happening every single day. It's not an atmosphere of human logic. I... I was not just I was not going to speak about it, but Josimar remembered me, reminded me that I uh, said in a Natal about this uh, taking off. We are taking off, and uh, Josimar ended up gave, giving me a bibli biblical foundation in Galatians, tell us for us to be detached, uprooted from this wicked world. The Paul referred in Galatians, it's not the world of sin. The, this world was Judaism, the world of religion. The, that, this was uh, bringing them down. They could no longer advance as in the beginning. They were advancing very quickly. But the Judaizers came in and contaminated the Galatians. And then the world held the church and Galatians down. But Paul said for us, uh, to remove the roots of this world. So in the last year or the end of last year, I was in Fortaleza in November. We passed by a torment, a storm. Praise the Lord. In November and December, the Lord told himself that the was greatly victorious, and the church, at the end of December, already began to broaden the space of their tent, where they built a new meeting hall that in January, getting ready, we used that place that theoretically would fit 480, but there were more than 600 people there. So it's a great victory. We would like to say, right, Josimar, that uh, those who look at the logical plane, as Andreas says, look at the logical plane, at the religious plane, they try to compare themselves to us. Right, so they, they try to compare, to compete. While we remain in the same earthly plane, on the same logical plane, it seems that we are competing with somebody. But praise the Lord, when we take off, this is my feeling, right? When we take off from the earthly plane, when we take off from the religious plane, we will no longer be competing with anybody. There is no competition. Simply, the Lord take us off. And I use these two words, right? When you take off, we'll take off and launch. You're no longer in the plane of logics of human uh, reasoning. You are in a spiritual plane, the supernatural plane. Then God has freedom to do all of that, all of that, but to bring that in. Then you can share with us about Revelation 1:1. 1, 1. In Revelation 1:1, 1, 1, we see here. Um, in revelation of Jesus, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. His sin is signified it by his angel to his servant John. It brings lots of important points. This is the point the church did not look at carefully that ended up falling in degradation. So, what is it? The word spoken in the church, the word that governs the church, which brings the church to have a direction. You've come to the church, it is the word of the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's not a word of human logics, it's not a word of theology, but it is the word of revelation of Jesus Christ. 
This is the first point, the revelation of Jesus Christ makes all the difference. It takes us out of the earthly plane, the logical plane. It makes us to take off and be detached from the uh, wicked world, right? Take us away from that and to place us in the heavenly environment. This is the first point. Second, this revelation, God wants Christ to pass on to a group of servants. And this group of servants, actually, it is formed especially of his prophets. God needs his prophets to bring the word of revelation to his church. But another important principle, which is neglected, overlooked in Christianity, or even we knew the knowledge, but we did not understand how it worked. So among the servants, there's one servant who is distinguished, who receives the notification of this revelation. He is like the other servants, but he is special in the sense of receiving notification. Uh, this revelation, I want to make, make it clear, because this revelation is not from John, not from the one who received this notification. The uh, notification it is of Jesus Christ given by God, but he special in the sense of being notified, because God does in this way, that the, there's only one voice of command, that there's only one line of command not to have any confusion. So John, he then signified it and sent to the other servants. These other servants, at the time of Revelation, they are these are not offices, positions. In the end times, God is no longer concerned about those positions. He can effectively operate through teens. It's not a matter of a positions of an elder or a deacon or apostle. Positions that say anything, but they are servants. What, what does it mean, a servant? Servant in, in Revelations 1, 2, and 3 makes clear that are the seven stars the messengers of God. So the servants are messengers of God. In other words, we want to serve the Lord, we have to be messengers of God. Unfortunately, many wants to compete with the message of God. We do not have our own message. We only convey the message of God. And many want to be more eloquent than God, want to speak better messages than God. God is not concerned in this realm of speaking messages. God is concerned about doing his will. So today, God needs the reality of a group of servants who each one of them are faithful. As in Timothy 2.2, each of them are faithful to receive the word and with that to add that without uh, conveying their own words but conveying the word of God in a faithful way. This is the picture in Zechariah 4 that I presented to you. Uh, the bowl that we see on the lampstand that is a were represented as a group of servants, a group of prophets, receiving the prophetic word from the two spouts of gold, the golden oil. And this group of servants have the responsibility of feeding this word into the church, the church to shine bright and to function. This is what's happening. What's happening, for example, let me take an example of the church in Belarus Monkey. They simply, they have a group of servants, they got the word, and they are practicing it. They're putting that into practice in, in different formats the Spirit is presenting. They do, they're 
Earth and Belo Horizonte in the region, they begin to shine bright more and more. This is what the Lord did today in the last time. This is the order. Word that is spoken in the church, it's not a marvelous word of a great Bible master or speaker of good messages, but the revelation of Jesus Christ revealed by one who was dignified and he shares with the others. All, all the others, they are faithful ones in bringing the church into practice for the church to function. That's the way it will work until the Lord comes. This is the big question because God always has a channel to dispense your revelation. God always used right, a channel and this and this is what leaves a few a few men confused i think a lot of people wait for god to speak there's gonna uh, angels gonna descend there's gonna be thunder no god uses man god uses man uses the mouth of man to speak now a simple heart we can see that and the question of revelation one about the word is a revelation of jesus christ that notified John, so John could have, could reveal to his servant this this faithful servant, right, but Pedro? You be, being faithful according to what God says, you know, because for you to know what what God says can be unpleasant to a lot of people. So you're either faithful to what. God says, are you going to worry about what other people said? No, I say this. I can't say this. No, it's a it's a big responsibility of who re receives this word to be faithful, to trans transmit faithfully to what God said. Oh, Lord. So God can give us fidelity, like Timothy, to be faithful, to transmit, to also transmit other gifts so that they can reach the church, the church to be supplied. The we presented in Natal, it was phenomenal. That image of Zachariah. The, the pipes are supplied through the oil. Look at the picture here. So it's this, so the candle that is represents the church it shines to be we need to be full, full of the word full of the spirit and it shines and it's going to reach everyone we have light in us we have a light but sometimes we don't shine we don't shine like we should because the oil is missing the word but the more full you are the more you're going to shine and you're going to bring more other people to shine. I saw these testimonies in Belo Horizonte. And they made every brother function. The church moving. The gospel being preached. The people being renewed. This is the shining. Because the oil is reaching. And the lamps are all shining. The, <laughs> the church is going to... Wherever the church is, Amen. it will shine. That's why the people are being attracted. Where there is darkness, when it comes a small pick of light, of it's going to guide the people. And today the church is shining. It's shining. And that's what brings people. All our churches, we have contacts. Here, we always have a new contact. So, brothers, people are being attracted. People are, are being brought by the word. God has encountered the channel to speak. And this, this speaking has reached other faithful servants. And then we are reaching more people. So, thank the Lord. And like this, we're going to advance and reach people. This week, in the immersion, one phrase uh, called my attention. I went to the immersion, and it said like this: "God speaks, your 
prophet is notified, it's Saturday point one. It moves through a group of faithful servants and transmit faithfully the word of the church that believes and executes the will of God. So, hallelujah, today the church can execute the order of God. It is the extension of what Jesus Christ did here on earth, completing the will of God. Why? Because as God is speaking, God is using a prophet, God is using your prophet that dispenses this word and it reaches the whole church. And the experience that we're having is that us and God, our region here, we have been practicing this word and has been able to do the work through the church. Uh, the Brother Pedro talked about the Holy Youth. And the Lord has given us, given the Son with Holy Youth, this army. You know, this was prophesied a while ago, but today, you know, the, and we have the House of Kings here, a small church, 35, 40 people. But today, we started the House of Teens with four Teens, but we believe in this word. Today, we have two house of teens. We we have you know it's a small church. It's a it's a city with fifteen thousand people. But we believe and we have hope. And one of our house of teens, we have twenty five teens, and they do come and see. And every week there's invites. There's new contacts. And in the last conference, we were encouraged by the word of this word to open more house of teens. I believe that we had 300 or so house of teens, and soon after we hit 400. So new, the house of teens in, in, at the end of the conference was encouraged by Pedro so that we could encourage this house of teens that these houses need needed to advance and encourage cities of the micro region that if they if they didn't have a house of teens to open a house of teens and us today in fact we went to a, a neighboring city to practice the word thank the lord so these four teens turned into today two house of teens working for the glory of God, and we travel neighboring cities. And in our neighboring cities, with 20 teens. Why? Because the church believed in the prophetic word. Um, God has encountered in the church these servants that transmit faithfully this word. Brother Pedro, excuse me, sorry. I just want to say a little bit of this, of believing in the prophetic word. Brother Pedro started October in the whole turbulence. I made a call to him. I called him to come here to Fort Alisa. There wasn't a lot of a lot many people, but we we found a, an agenda for him to come during the week, and we you know we had fellowship in a court. You know, there was people. You know, during the meeting, Brother Pedro said a word that we believe. It was, it was Isaiah. It was Isaiah 54. Yeah. Because Brother Pedro said this word, and we grasped this word. Isaiah 54, 2. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. So, when brother passed this burden here in Fortaleza, we grasp this burden. We need to extend and enlarge our tents. And we had no resources. But we believe in the word and put our heart so that we can, you know, create this uh, meeting hall in March after the conference of uh, February in the beginning of February uh, March we inaugurated 
Our true inauguration was uh, now when Brother Pedro came. <laughs> because it was all materialized. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we had to work. We believed, we obeyed, we passed the burden to the church. And now, it's all materialized. We have a beautiful meeting hall. So this is a result of believing the prophetic word. Yeah. And I want to Look how important this is. First, uh, the servants see that this word is not from John. This revelation is from John. It passes to John and John passes on to the servants. So both John and the, the other servants, servants have a responsibility of being have the responsibility of being faithful to this message and to pass to the church. So this eliminates, church. So right, brothers? It leads, right, to competition. All sorts of competition, all, all wants sorts to of better. That's wants why. to say better. All saints, this, you know, in the middle of last year, in the middle of the last year, just let's let's say, say, let us say, a leader, uh, a leader from the, the dissidents came after me, Saying that I was insisting a lot, that I was insisting of the a lot in speaking about the prophetic word. Oh, you're I speaking too much about the prophetic word. I, I said to him faithful, that, that I have only been faithful to what God signified it to me. God is signifying it to me. I must be faithful. Just said. I want to say, this is what Jose Mar just so said. I'd like to you restate uh, that. Be in between, you mentioned be in between two, so then you two get. Options. One option two, is to serve the Lord. Two options. And, One and, is, you know, be faithful to the man, Lord or and to displease man. Of pleasing man or and not being faithful to the Lord. Think about so when you pleasing man and not being faithful to the Lord. So if I when say you, like this way of the revelation, ah, this is going to be unpleasant to some brothers. We're going to lose some brothers. But for me to not lose some brothers, I'm going to stop being faithful to the Lord. And then I'm going to open up space to, for, I'm going to be, you know, on the wall. And then it's going to be a very, very big changer because we need to be, we need to permit, we need remain, to remain faithful, faithful to the Lord. Lord. If the Lord said, if you cannot, you cannot wave, you know, the Lord's response is wavering. The Lord said, uh, no, if and it's a pleasant to some or not, or it's the problem with the Lord. So I need to be faithful, faithful to the Lord. Right second, place, second, don't promote. Does not promote. Philippi so also said that don't promote among not, us between does not promote, promote you know, dispute. any disputes. Unfortunately, Fortunately, who doesn't also have this vision, have this vision is like, like this. Then who came after me, you know, question, as if questioning why, why am I why saying am I this, this for him? For him, he, he would, would say something else. else. If he, he was, was in the lead, he would say something he would else. Say something else. So, so he's someone with someone no awareness that the conscience. he wants, wants to, to compete, compete with me. With me. Compete he with me what I'm speaking. What I say. He has no not awareness what, what I'm speaking. Is not my word. word. I'm speaking. Say, it is what the Lord is what revealed, the Lord it to, revealed me. to me. I seek to be faithful to the Lord. So those who don't have this vision, unfortunately, among them, these people, right? There will be always, will always this environment this of competition, environment of dispute, dispute or who speaks better, better. This environment. There will be lots be of, people lot of people disputing, disputing podium. One wants to speak, to speak better, than, better the other, than the other, and it doesn't and produce, produce any work of the Lord. Work of the, Lord. the will of, of God the is not God done. Isn't be Unfortunately, done. Unfortunately, it remain on the you know, earthly it's plane. Be in the, Earthly sphere. Of this earth and, don't and we want don't to, want to be in this don't want to remain logic. in the plane of this logic. We, we want, want to, to really detach take and off. take off. 
you know, this it, is another it, point it, that we have to extract. It's worth it to have this value. The attach and take off. And just, just to, to wrap up, our, we're almost our to the end. Just to finish, and I wanted to. I'd like to make it clear for you, saints, clear that in the church, that in the church, there, there are prophets. Pro there are prophets. There, there are prophets. prophets. I just told you in Revelation one, one, Revelation one one, that these that servants, servants to the group of prophets. In First Corinthians fourteen, fourteen, it makes it very clear. That our practice today, that, our practice of that today, is why in 14.26, verse speaks about our 20. practice today. What shall we do, saints, when we gather together? One has psalms, another teaching, this one revelation, this another tongues, another interpretation of a thing to be done for the building up. And in our experience, in our experience, one has the word of immersion, has another has of, the enjoyed in transcription, another uh, uh, join the spiritual potluck. So, this, this word of immersion, immersion is bringing lots of riches, so, in the church. so many so wonderful things. Our, this is our, things. our meetings, it's no longer it a meeting in Sardis, no longer, this meeting, of no longer a meeting that. Everybody wants to dispute and contend for who speaks better. We're not content. We're not concerned with that. We're concerned with the building up of the body. This, this is the brother who came in to ask me that I was speaking too much about the prophetic word. He wanted to make it understand that I was uh, ha taking the place of other prophets. This is a lie. Revelation 1.1 1, 1, makes it very clear. There's a group of prophets. I'm part of this group of prophets. When I am signified, I pass on to the group of prophets. The group of prophets speak faithfully these words. In each church, also, there are the prophets. That is why in verse 20, 29, it says, Let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. But if anything is revealed to another who sits it, let the first keep silent. Well, there are prophets in the church meeting. So we're not taking the role and function of those prophets. That's why I'm saying that we need more mature saints, saints with the heart of Mary Magdalene, who really seek to understand what the Lord wants to speak, have a heart going deeper, do not remain at the surface of the letter. These prophets that will help the church quite a lot in bringing those nuggets, going to the church, these precious points. Perhaps many just overlook. Well, those two, three prophets really, they're really helpful. The church is the word as it is, not to overlook it in a superficial way. How about the others? In verse 31, for you can all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be encouraged. And then all brothers and sisters, dividing groups, making immersion, sharing, uh, enjoying the spiritual potluck, they are all filled with feelings of care. And then be open for many to give their testimonies in a short and straightforward way, two minutes, three minutes each. Then these meetings are being really rich meetings because it's no longer doesn't depend only on one person speaking, but all of the members are functioning, are giving their contribution. Besides that, we still have two or three prophets who are giving a, a clearer direction and going deeper in the word. Of course, these two or three prophets, they don't need to take too long, right? Only making it clear the point. In our meetings, are raising the level. They're really taking off from the earthly plane. We're going to the heavenly plane. That's how that I believe that we'll build up the church. And at the same time, outside, we'll preach the gospel of the kingdom and bring the Lord back.
I don't know if I still have time, Andre. Very, very short. You can continue. Um, but ever since I joined the church life, we would go to Estância. When we come back to Fortaleza, we would visit the churches to bring, you know, the burden that Brother Dong had passed. So, thank the Lord. And like this, the, the church will advance. The the spirit. We press for time. Remember this. Truly, this new phase of the church life where every one could prophesy, but it doesn't matter what region we are in, we will just have one speaking, one word, this word that has, God has given us to the church. It doesn't matter if, like Andre said, today it's a mix of São Paulo and Paraíba, but we are under here in just one speaking, in just one word. Where? Uh, of where, you know, a pastime of a teen could speak such an ele elevated word. Today, we don't have doctors of, of the word. You know, Brother Pedro said here in Natal, there's no problem of us, you know, seeking to better ourselves in the word, but we need to have a heart complete of, for this direction. The Lord, God wants to give us what is the true truth. You know, these kids, they don't have a, a spiritual baggage. You know, brother Marcia has been here since 95. But, you know, we need to have simplicity in our heart, in the spirit, in our mind. In our, we need to engrave this word in our forehead. But through the word, through the immersion. We need to be one with this word, you know, transcribe the word, pray this word. And this has been engraved in the and stated them in the truth. It's not only the teens now. For, you know, there was room pushing the, <laughs> the swing in the right, but everyone's in the swing together with the teens. We have this burden. The Lord has found these people in the church. Thank the Lord that we can prophesy in one, one spirit, in one word. Amen. Philip, today you don't need to be pushing the swing anymore. The 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 swing is just moving. If you if you're in the, if if you stay in the middle, the swing is gonna take you away. <laughs> Andrea, just before we end, let to remind you of John 21. Not to forget John 21. That the, uh, after the Lord Jesus directed and appeared to them in Jerusalem, the same night of resurrection, John 21, Andre, I don't know if you realized, he was no longer in Jerusalem. Peter with the other six who were in Galilee because they were close to the Sea of Tiber Tiberias. So they left Jerusalem to wait the Lord in Galilee. And since the Lord took, took a while to show to them, we're concerned about our livelihood, their sustenance. What about now? I must do something. And then Peter came back fishing. I don't have time to go over the history, but let's see the saints that those are following us. Since now it is time for us to no longer be focused on our uh, secular chores and our sustenance. The Lord will care for that. It is time, but this is, this is we're in the end times. It's time for us to even, I'm not saying to you to be fired from your job, to let that go. I'm not saying that. Keep on being faithful in your work. Do your job well, yet the heart is important. Dedicate your heart to the true, your true job. You are a priest of the Lord. 
serve the Lord in his church. You are the one who the Lord called you to shepherd the sheep, to tend them and sheep, the, to tender the sheep. That is why, brothers and sisters, this has happened by Luzonchi, several churches, the church life becoming dynamic. Let us no longer be with that feeling of going to the meeting on the weekend and the, may the, the Lord use us in some way also the week function, also involving children, spree teens, teens, young ones, mighty men of David and also the saints for maturity, the black corps, they all are part of a great team of the Lord in the end times, shepherding, preaching the gospel, caring for the sheep, and we will build up the church. We will find a dwelling place here on earth, seeing everyone to work as priests of God. This is what I'd like to add. Amen. We were very tightly in the final of the broadcast. We're going to ask Philip to pray. I'm going to liberate the comments for you to finish praying for everyone who's listening right now. Amen. Point two, immersion of today. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord, thank you for your word. Because your word is the, the, the principal tool, Lord, to sanctify the church. Lord, oh Lord Jesus, Lord, your word is the truth that proceeds from the only true God. Lord, continue dispensing your word to the church so I can reach your people. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus Thank you. Lord. Jesus is Lord. Have a good night, brothers and sisters. Thank you, brother Pedro. Amen. Thank you, brother Hello. Good night to everyone. Let us press on. Amen. Amen.